My back pain is related to my fibromyalgia in that it makes it worse. Um, I started having back pain as a teenager, which they couldn't really find the source for. Um, I then had a car accident, um, which made it, had whiplash, which made it worse. And my reaction to pain has always been quite strong. Um, so I'd always been told, well, your reaction doesn't match the injury. Um, and then I broke my back uh, when I was in my early 20s. A uh, horse threw me into a fence. Um, and they told me that I would heal stronger than ever um, and that I would be out of pain. And I wasn't um, once, I, once I recovered from that. Um, so whilst I do have damage to my back anyway, the fibromyalgia, I'm led to believe, is, is pr probably linked to the original cause when I was a teenager and then has exaggerated um, the injuries um, that I've had since then and the pain response to them. As a teenager, it was just annoying. It was just, you know, I didn't really want to do sports and I just wanted to sit and read a book. So it wasn't the end of the world. Um, but then as an adult, um, I started to have to take medication. Um, I ended up having to change jobs because I couldn't commute anymore. I couldn't do the drive anymore. Um, sitting in traffic on the motorway every morning, driving up to London, um, I wouldn't be able to walk by, by the end of it. Um, so I had to change jobs to move closer to home. Um, and then obviously I had my accident, which made it so much worse. Um, so for the last 10 years, basically, um, I've had pain that no one has been able to believe exists or explain why I have it. So it's led me to think I'm going mad, to think that I'm a hypochondriac, to think that there's something wrong with me mentally that I, you know, enjoy playing the victim as I've been told and, and all the rest of it so it's had a massive impact on my confidence and on just trusting my own experiences and what's actually happening with my body um, to the point of just trying to pretend it doesn't exist um, and within that time having to battle with doctors getting accused of drug seeking um, having problems at work with my attendants um, and getting blamed and shamed and disciplined um, for it um, and just the general um, sort of concept that I'm just not handling life properly and I should be able to just get on with this and there's nothing wrong with me. Um, I've been sent to psychiatrists when repeating me going to the doctors to complain about pain um, and spending a fortune on therapy and yoga and Pilates and you know, any sort of quack theory that's out there that, that might help me. Um, so negatively, it's cost me a fortune. Um, it's made me question my vanity. Um, it's lost me jobs. Um, and it's reduced my life. Things like going out clubbing, going to festivals, even just going out for a lovely long dinner with friends. If it's a hard chair in a restaurant, I, <laughs> there's only so long I can last before I need to go home again. Um, and so I would say, whilst I like to be a positive person, it's had a lot of negative impacts um, in my life, right, right up until the diagnosis, actually. Once I got diagnosed, I managed to turn things um, The key thing for me um, is when I'm in pain, I get tense. And I think anyone does when they're in pain, it's upsetting and you just want to be out of pain. So you tense up more. Maybe, you know, you, if your shoulder hurts, you might hold it a bit funny. Um, or, you know, if your back hurts, you might not be able to move so much. So you find yourself sort of stuck in one position. And that just perpetuates the pain. The more you tense up, the more pain you get, especially if you're having spasms, um, you know, like lightning shocks going up and down your spine you get very anxious and it's upsetting and all you want to do is find a way to stop it. So the key thing is to get rid of that anxiety, to reduce that anxiety, to relax, to be able to do the meditation you need to do or the breathing to do or the, go and have the bath or do the stretches that you've been recommended that will help get you out of pain and to get out of that sort of anxiety cycle with it. So cannabis really helps with that. Um, because it just helps to relax you. It helps you to just calm down. It shuts off the crazy anxiety voice in the head that, that just goes, oh my God, I'm in pain, I'm in pain, fight or flight sort of reaction that you get when you're in a lot of pain. Um, so it really helps with that. It helps with sleeping um, and being able to sleep when you're in pain so that you can just relax. And again, hopefully wake up the next day and, and the spasms are over or you're having 
a less of a pain day. Um, when I've tried topicals and tinctures, um, they've been amazing at getting rid of the pain. Um, there's one topical that I, I remember using that I just, you know, within 10 minutes, incredible spasms had just gone. They just, they just weren't there anymore. Um, and all it was was a rub. And I don't know of any muscle rubs that you can get in the pharmacy at the moment that, that actually just gets rid of the pain. It might help a bit, but it doesn't just get rid of it. Um, and being able to take tinctures, which I've done in the past, has just helped to reduce that everyday pain level to something that's more bearable um, and not having to wait until the end of the day when I'm not at work to be able to then use cannabis to relax and, and get rid of the day's pain. Rather, you can actually sort of avoid getting into that place initially by using a tincture in the morning, for example. Um, so that's how it's helped. 